Hey everybody, Paul Rabelais here, and in this video, we're going to talk about what happens when that season ticket holder passes away. All right, so at the time that I'm making this video, uh, it's you know football is a big deal around where I live. It, it's a it's a big deal year round, but especially right now. I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and where football is a way of life, everybody either goes to or watches you know our LSU Tigers. LSU stands for Louisiana State University. I've been going to LSU football games for about 50 years. My dad started taking, or my parents started taking me when I was just a little bitty child and, you know, have been following the Tigers ever since. And in, in case you haven't heard, uh, you know, the LSU Tigers um, a week ago won the national championship. I was at the game. It was completely insane. We went undefeated. Um, our quarterback, Joe Burrow, won the Heisman Trophy this year with the largest margin of victory in the history of the Heisman Trophy. Many people are saying our football team this year was the greatest college football team in the history of college football. It was an amazing season. So with all that being said, it's probably appropriate for us to talk about what happens to people's season tickets when they pass away. I'm going to go over, over the rules that we have for LSU, and if you have season tickets for another you know big time program where season tickets are in demand and your rules might be different or you want to contribute feel free in the comments below to contribute you know I, I don't know if 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 what LSU did is what everybody else does or or everybody else does something different so um, here's what we got and so we're going to talk about what happens to the season tickets and then we're going to talk about what um, they call around here priority points. Okay, so first let's talk about what happens to somebody's season tickets when they pass away. So we've got a couple of rules. It says in the case of the death of a season ticket holder, the surviving spouse will automatically become the ticket holder of record. Easy enough. Husband dies. He's married. White tickets will be put in the wife's name. However, the surviving spouse must notify the ticket office with a notarized letter and copy of death certificate to have the name changed on the account. So notarized letter, not really sure exactly what that means. I didn't see any kind of form. Notarized letter and, and copy of death certificate, surviving spouse gets the ticket and gets the tickets in the surviving spouse's name. If there is no surviving spouse, the athletic department will offer the option to renew the tickets to a surviving child if provided with a notarized and uncontested request by the child to be the season ticket holder of record. Okay, so dad dies, he has no wife, he's got three kids, one of the kids has to give the, um, I guess it's the athletic department, a notarized and uncontested request. What does that mean? Well, I'm guessing it means that if, you know, child A turns in this notarized and uncontested request and child B says, wait, wait a second here, athletic department, I want the tickets too. Then you've got something that's contested. So maybe, you know, nobody gets the tickets. But, you know, in normal cases, if one child steps up and offers that notarized letter, an uncontested request, then that child will, uh, the tickets will be put in that child's name. If there is no surviving child, the transfer will, transfer will be made to a surviving grandchild if provided with a notarized and uncontested request by the grandchild, grandchild to be the season ticket holder of record. Okay, so what does all that mean, I think? <clears throat> You know, as long as you got cooperative family and everything's good, then then no problem. One of the children will step up and ask to be ask for the tickets to be put in that child's name, and the tickets will be put in that child's name. But what if they're not cooperative? Well, I think it may make sense if you're a parent with season tickets and you kind of foresee that you have children who are amongst, you know, they have sibling rivalry and, and they're all going to want the tickets and they're going to fight over them. Maybe, maybe in your estate planning you know, documents, you ought to say something like, if, um, if my children, if there's any you know, contest over my season tickets, I direct that the season tickets go to so-and-so. Maybe that'll help, but there's no you know, provision in the uh, procedures for, for a season ticket holder to do something like that, but maybe it would help. All right, there's one other provision that's also important, relevant to the, what happens to the season tickets when you pass away. It says, at the time of ticket renewals, an individual ticket holder may request to transfer the ticket holder's tickets, ticket or tickets to a spouse or to a natural or adopted child or stepchild of the ticket holder. That's actually what happened in my case. 
my parents got to the age where they just couldn't climb the steps, couldn't climb the ramps anymore, so that uh, he requested that um, those uh, tickets be put into my name. And then, of course, I had to pay for them. But nonetheless, um, that was awesome. Um, and so it says, so this is, this might be applicable if while you're alive, you don't want there to be complete chaos upon your death. Maybe you, while you're, while you're alive, you actually request a transfer of your tickets to um, a child of yours so that that all gets done while you're alive and it's not a big issue when you pass away. The problem with that is you lose control over those tickets if you transfer them to you know, one of your children while you're alive. But maybe in some cases that makes sense. There's another uh, provision when um, a company either goes out of business or merges with a, another company, how they deal with that, but that's not directly related to estate planning, so I'm gonna pass on that one. Okay, so that's the deal with the season tickets. Um, when a season ticket holder dies, they'll put it in the name of the surviving spouse, if there's a surviving spouse. If they're not, they'll put it in the name of a child as long as they provide that notarized and uncontested letter. Um, and if not a child, then a grandchild. Okay, the other issue that we have to address though is the priority points. So those are points that people get as they get season tickets and as they make donations and it, it gives them the ability to buy away game tickets and postseason tickets. So there are some provisions related to estate planning regarding um, priority points. All right. So it says that following the death of a donor, a donor is somebody who has priority points, priority points accumulated by the deceased donor may be transferred only to the deceased donor's surviving spouse or direct descendants. And then it says, absent written direction to the contrary received by Tiger Athletic Foundation, TAF, prior to a donor's death, following the death of a donor, points shall be transferred. Okay, so absent written direction, points go to the spouse. And if there is no spouse, points shall be divided equally among the deceased donor's children who wish to accept the available benefits. Goes on a little bit more from there. But here, regarding priority points, it says, in the in, uh, absent written direction to the contrary received by Tiger Athletic Foundation prior to the donor's death. So here's one where if you'd like your priority points at your death to go to a specific child, for example, then you have to give the Tiger Athletic Foundation written direction prior to your death. So that's the deal there, just be aware. And then there's all kinds of other exceptions and rules. There's, a lot, there's several exceptions to the rule that in general says that priority points may not be assigned in any way, and that was one of those exceptions. All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna mention is this issue on planned gifts. And so um, this is where you can get some priority points for providing a bequest to the Tiger Athletic Foundation. So I thought, thought that was interesting. It says priority point credit for making a properly documented planned gift valued at $10,000 or more to either the Tiger Athletic Foundation or such and such is available. It does say qualifying gifts may be either revocable or irrevocable. So this is a one-time award, blah, blah, blah. And so to get the points, you have to provide documentation, which should consist of a fully executed estate intention letter. Never done one of those, not really sure what that is. And an excerpt from the donor's will, trust, or similar gift instrument verifying the intent to give and gift terms. If the planned gift is revoked or the actual amount received from the gift is less than $10,000, priority points allocated will be revoked. Okay, so you can get some priority points just for uh, writing a will, leaving the Tiger Athletic Foundation $10,000 or more, and then doing the documentation, getting that to the Tiger Athletic Foundation, even though they don't have your money yet. Now, if you change your will, I guess you're supposed to let them know and those points, you know, they go away. So just want to let you know that that's available. Um, you know, I've lived and worked in Baton Rouge for a long, long time, have handled a few bequests to the Tiger Athletic Foundation, not, not many, not as much as I think they'd like, um, because it's going to cost a lot of money for us to run those program and hire those coaches and, uh, you know, do what they need to do to stay at that, you know, high level. 
But um, nonetheless, I have dealt with a few issues over the years of people wanting to direct where their season tickets go. So in light of our recent national championship, in light of the fact that we're winding down the football season, only one more football game really left at the time that I'm making this video, which is the Super Bowl between the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. I believe five LSU Tigers will be playing in that Super Bowl, former LSU Tigers for that matter. I thought it would be relevant to, to let you know that you know uh, schools and teams have policies on season tickets, and if season tickets are in high demand, then you may want to take a look at that so that you can have things in place with your estate planning program or otherwise, so that things go smooth and you know things wind up in the names of who you'd want them you know to, to be. So if you, have, if you have some knowledge on your team, your school, um, professional, college, whatever the case may be, um, go ahead and make sure you, you know, contribute to that in the comments below. I think that can help everybody out. Um, I know not all of you are football fans and some of you may think it is complete insanity for you know, the amount of money that people spend on their season tickets. And in some cases you may be right, but nonetheless it, it happens. So because of that, then schools and teams have to have all these procedures on, you know, what happens when somebody passes away. All right, make sure you hit the subscribe button on the channel and the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. I'm going to keep you posted. Tune in every morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, where I'm going to provide more education so that you can protect what you have, keep things in the family, keep it easy, keep it simple, keep the relationships prospering. So I uh, look forward to continuing to educate you about what you can do to protect what you have and protect your family. Okay, I'm Paul Rambley. Have a great day.